Hello friends and colleagues, welcome back to the Spline Decal Placer. I'm Nadav Hexelman and in this episode we are going to give ourselves some more control over our spline here. So first of all I want to, I'm going back to my blueprint here and I want to change, I want to be able to control the scale of my spline. And uh, as you can see here, the projection uh, is not big enough and it doesn't uh, affect um, this part of the surface. So I want to, ch to be able to change the project projection and always also want to be able to change uh, the size, the horizontal size of my um, my decal here, my decal box, so I can make it smaller or bigger if I want to. So going back here to the relative transform scale in my add decal component, I can right click here and split this truck. And now I can control each and, and every one of these axes. And if you remember, uh, the X axis is actually the projection axis. So this will be um, my projection scale. So if I promote this to a variable and I call it, um, let's call it projection scale. And let's uh, open the little eye here and go back. And also let's also um, drop this under our decal setup. So now um, projection scale, I can grow this as you can see dynamically, I can make um, the decal um, hit more of the surface. This is very useful if let's say I have a place where, um, let's say there's something here above and uh, this is too too big and it starts projecting on, on the wrong things, I can make it smaller. Or in our case, if it doesn't, if it's not big enough to to hit the um, the surface below in some angles, we can just change it to be like so. So it's really, really handy. Second thing um, is we can do, uh, we want to do the vertical scale, right? Or the, let's call it the decal scale. So I create another variable here. Uh, let's create a float and call it decal scale. We'll also open the eye and because we want to keep, I want to keep my decal um, the same ratio in the scale, you can do it differently. I'm just going to connect both of those inputs to my uh, decal scale. So if I go now to, you see now it's, uh, it's at zero, the default. I can go back to decal scale and change the default to one. Okay, and now I can go back here. Let's open the little eye, it's open and put it under decal setup. I can go now to my uh, decal scale and make it uh, change its size. But what you see is happening here now is I'm making my decal smaller, but um, let's say I want to, I need more uh, footsteps here, right? Because I'm changing the decal, I also need to change how I am calculating the size of my decal to get the amount of decals I can put inside the spline that we got already. So I need to change that according to the new scale that I'm setting up. So let's do that. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna go here to my, this is where I'm getting uh, the scale. I'm getting the, le the length of the spline and I'm dividing it, dividing it by 512, which is the size <clears throat> of my decal, my initial size. But I want to get the size, and actually I want to get my decal scale that I already plugged in. And I want to multiply this with 512. Now, be alarmed here. Um, this is a little bit tricky here, and we need to clamp this value because what might happen here is we might get, if, we, if this value is too low, uh, we might get like insane numbers here uh, for looping. Maybe it will create 10,000s of uh, decals. I don't know how many, and it's, this loop is just going to crash our, our uh, engine. So we'll need to, um, to clamp this value that's coming out of here, actually, to the loop. And let's say, start with the first clamp, and let's say that we don't want to have more than 100... Um, more than 100 <coughs> uh, decals spawning. Okay, so this will allow us to keep this loop um, relatively controllable. And now let's go back to our decal scale and see what happens if I change the scale now. 
So it's not working yet because there's one more thing I need to do. Of course, I forgot. I need to do the same um, multiplication that I'm doing here. So I'm getting the length, I'm getting the correct number, but I'm not setting it here, right? So I need to do the same thing here when we're getting the distance, because the distance, remember, we are getting a, um, the point along the spline, and this point is also changing dynamically with the scale. So we need to connect uh, this two. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my mistake. I need to take the index and multiply this like so. So I'm multiplying again the index with the new uh, kind of offset number that we created here. Okay, connecting the index again. So think about it as a scale offset. We're using the number that we got, the 512, and we're just uh, multiplying it with a new number. Okay, now <clears throat> we can see it's changing uh, dynamically according to the scale that we are setting up. Okay, very good. Now, uh, let's also add a small offset here. So I want to also have, um, not only affect the number, the size, I want also want to affect the offset, um, how, how much uh, the decals are, are farther apart from each other. So I'm just gonna add another float here. I'm gonna call it decal offset. And the offset is going to be here. <clears throat> and I'm going to multiply the offset with, uh, with the scale that we are getting here. Let's also, uh, sorry, let's compile it, see that it's the default is one. Bring it here. And of course, we need to do the same thing here. Just copy it over here. And here. Let's see how it's working now. So as you can see, I'm offsetting uh, without changing the scan, just offsetting how long, how much of the decals are spawning. But as you can see, uh, when I go to numbers like, uh, let's say, sorry, I'm using the scale now. Um, so when I go to really, really low numbers, um, it does. It already doesn't make sense. So I think like a no, like a. We can start our scale, let's say at 1.5. We can change this and we can clamp it to around, uh, let's say 12, I don't know. So let's clamp this number two. Okay, so just looking uh, at that, I saw that I can, some values I don't need and I can just take my offset here and clamp it to, uh, let's say um, we said um, minimum will be 1.5. And the maximum will be 12. This will ensure that we don't put um, wacky numbers, wacky numbers that we won't be able to use. Just gonna protect us. And we're gonna do it here too, the clamping. Okay, so see it stops at 1.5 and goes all the way, uh, stops here. We can also limit this actually, if we go to our um, decal offset, we can limit it here. We can say the minimum is uh, uh, 1.5, the maximum will be 12. We can do it the same way. And it's just gonna stop us at 1.5 and 12. 
You can do the same thing for the scale. Feel free to do whatever uh, feels right for you. Um, next thing or last thing I think for this, just want to give myself so uh, in my version. So now you can just change the decal. So I can you can just choose say let's choose our decal here. You can choose it, and you can change this to whatever you you like. Let's say this. I don't know, but um, in my uh, in my version, I uh, because I use footsteps or tire tracks, so uh, we have two sides of the. So there's moments where I'm using two sides. So I want the first decal to be the left boot, the second decal to be the right boot, and and vice versa. So I wanted to switch between the boots, and in order to do that, I did something like that. I just uh, Disconnect this for a moment. The decal to place. That's the variable that we created. If you remember, this this variable we expose, and, and here we, we put the actual decal, uh, the material. And what I can do here is I can just um, if I choose it and press here and turn it into an array and let it. Uh, it will give you like a warning, but it's okay. And now in our my array, let's compile one sec. I can add um, two decals here, two slots for decals, and I can put one boot and second boot, like so. And now what I can do is actually use the loop in order to get um, also the relevant um, the relevant decal to place. How, how am I going to do that? I know that if I do a percent of the index, if I take the index and I do percent by two, so this gives me um, if this um, uh, we are actually so if we divide by two um, the number here, this gives me um, the remain, and we know that if we divide by two and it's zero, the remain will be zero, right? And if we divide by one, it's going to be something else. So we so we know that every second number, so if it's two or four or, or six or eight, it's dividable by two, and we're going to get a zero here. So if this x was equal zero, right? If it equals zero. We're gonna get a copy. We're gonna get the first. So when I'm getting the array, I'm getting the first um, element of the array, which will be the left. Let's connect it like that. True. And if the reminder is not zero, which would be any other number, I'm gonna set it to one. Uh, we have an error. Let's see, target is reconnected. I forgot to connect. I forgot to connect the um, decal itself here. And voila! You see, we have um, alternating footsteps. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you enjoy the content. And if you would like to support my work or my game Into the Maze, feel free to subscribe to the channel or follow me on Patreon, Twitter, or Twitch. All the links are in the description below. And I hope to see you in the next videos. Happy devving!